Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the alumni open house with the uh, School of Medicine. Today we are going to showcase some of the new technologies and interactive educational uh, programs that we have going on here at the Eccles Health Sciences Library at the University of Utah. Um, right now we are in the Tree of Hippocrates Education Studio, which is a live, or uh, excuse me, it is a uh, video, audio, multimedia, uh, studio space as well as uh, equipment that we are providing to our patrons in order to allow them to create uh, multimedia projects for uh, you know classwork or lectures um, it is open to both staff uh, faculty as well as students and uh, do you want to come in for a moment here tally nope um, yeah so before we get totally going, I'm going to go make sure that the stream is working outside of the studio and we'll just keep, uh, keep going from here. So bear with me for one moment. Is there the stream? It's already started. Oh, okay. I am talking to the internet right now. Oh, the entire... Is um, one. one person is watching. That not work? <clears throat> well, let's try Twitter. Why would this work? If you want to go to twitter.com forward slash EHSL library, that might work better. Apologies for the technical difficulties, everyone. Well, at least, well, at least I didn't start now and that's what you said. Right. Out well, I mean, people don't necessarily need to watch it here. Yeah. They could just walk in here. But Wait, yeah. Actually right. How loud is it? Should we keep the door closed? Uh, one less L. EHS library, sorry. My apologies. I am apologies. I'm going to go back to our wonderful viewers. All right. Sorry about that uh, delay, but uh, we're trying to duplicate the streaming that's going on in this room outside to uh, showcase and entice people to come on in and uh, take a chat. So the plan today is to have uh, uh, alumni that are here currently uh, visiting the School of Medicine to check out and hear about some of the new and exciting things that we're doing here at the University of Utah on the Health Sciences campus, um, including the library, including the technologies that we have here that I will go into in a moment. Uh, as well as the uh, Imagine Perfect Care uh, kind of re-envisioned uh, clinical space that is happening over in the School of Medicine right now. And uh, in addition to that, over in the Health Sciences Education Building, we have uh, lectures going on. Um, is it working? You're, you're, you're Am I sideways? Yes. Okay, let's try and make the iPad go the other way. And it's not, it still isn't visible. In the background, it's shifting. Really? So we can really watch it. Really? On the Twitter? Or the? On Twitter, yeah. Really? Because it should be looking at you right now. It is looking at me in the background. Look at me. Don't look at me. In the background? Mm. Let me uh, take a look real quick. So, this is as much uh, experiment for us to do a live stream as it is uh, anything else. So we are, we are ironing out issues as we go along. Oh, you know what? It might just be the uh, browser. Um, yeah, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So we have a simulcast going right now um, on YouTube. We are currently doing the high quality stream test uh, where we have our audio equipment as well as our camera, our nice camcorder, hooked into the computer that is here in the space for uh, people to use uh, the programs and the uh, you know apps that are on it 
uh, in order to do video capture, audio capture, and uh, of course, live streaming. Uh, in addition to that, we have the Twitter live stream, which is on the iPad that is with all of the equipment here, so that not only is the space here uh, a dedicated multimedia creation space, but we also have the ability for most of this equipment to go mobile. So you don't necessarily have to be sitting here on these lovely chairs with this lovely table. Uh, you can also go mobile. So users, you know, faculty members that may have their own office that need to do some lecture capture for their uh, classwork will be able to do that, as well as uh, students who uh, want to go create video projects uh, out amongst the health sciences campus. But we also have the dedicated space here, which is a uh, good, good, uh, good start for us. Uh, so that people have a dedicated space in order to create multimedia items. So, yeah, um, some of the other technologies that we're going to be showcasing today, and at some point uh, I will take the Twitter stream mobile to go walk through the library to go show off some of the other uh, technology, so stay tuned for that. That will hopefully be coming up here within maybe an hour or so. Uh, we will lose the YouTube stream because the YouTube stream is dedicated into this space. So I will take the Twitter stream with us, and so the three of you that are watching on YouTube right now will unfortunately lose the stream. But uh, some of the other technologies that we have here at the Eccles Library, besides the education studio here, uh, we have a new virtual reality demonstration kit. Um, it is an Oculus Rift workstation, as well as uh, virtual reality uh, devices. And they are currently outside of the studio space right now, demonstrating that and allowing some of our alumni who are walking through to play with that at the moment. Uh, so that's really cool. We're hoping to be able to uh, allow patrons and people who are really interested in deep diving into virtual reality to have a workstation that's uh, fully capable of developing uh, virtual reality games, simulations, uh, especially with a health sciences uh, focus because that is one aspect of virtual reality that I do not believe has become totally fleshed out is the health sciences applications. Um, there are a few like anatomy games that are out there. There's also um, a few kind of more like rehab, occupational therapy based games where people are, you know, getting active, they're moving, they're trying to, you know, teach people to, you know, be able to recover from injuries or surgeries or, you know, all sorts of things that you need uh, those sorts of physical and occupational therapies for. Uh, so that's what's up here on the top level of the library. We also have a station to thank a librarian because this is the National Thank a Librarian Month. And we have our web designer here who is poking his head in. Um, so for those of us who are also interested in you know, thanking librarians, we have the hashtag thank a librarian pins that we're wearing today. Uh, that we can, uh, you know, show the appreciation for librarians and the library profession, especially here at the Health Sciences Campus, because libraries do play an extraordinarily important part in health sciences uh, in order to help people retrieve information, retrieve, uh, or at least, you know, not be the gatekeepers of information, but be the uh, stewards of information uh, gathering and exploration. So, um, despite you know the uh, ever expanding digital realm of information publishing and uh, dissemination, you know library librarians and libraries still play a very important part in that. So, that's what's going up on up here at the top level of the library. On the main level of the library, we have received a brand new, from last week, it showed up on our doorstep, uh, anatomage table, which uh, when I 
go and take the iPad. And the Twitter stream downstairs to show you, you'll see is a seven foot by uh, four foot. Essentially, it looks like a giant iPad. It's white, it's got two giant touch screens in it. But what the Anatomage table does is um, it's a uh, 3D cadaver that you can uh, play with and um, do dissections with a multitude of cadavers. So human models, skeletons, animal models, all allow you to do a deep dive into the anatomy of these uh, cadavers without actually having a live cadaver that you're touching. So that is really interesting, I think. And um, when we go and show that off, uh, it'll be pretty wild because you can do all sorts of things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with a uh, normal cadaver, uh, such as essentially like take like a string and like cut straight through the model and then be able to see like the MRI images as you're going along He's of the... <laughs> Not really, but uh, yeah, so that will be really interesting. And then on the garden level of the library, we have all sorts of crazy things going on. Uh, we have the Corker uh, Innovation and Design Lab, which is just a full workshop for creation space, uh, for creative uh, uses. They have like laser cutters, all sorts of power tools, a ton of uh, just things in order to create the medical devices and uh, things that people uh, are creatively coming up with and innovating here at the University of Utah, but I uh, need a dedicated space in order to make those uh, dreams and imaginations come alive. Um, we also have 3D printers down there that we will show off. Um, there's all sorts of things going on with 3D printers. We have a metal 3D printer, which is wild, in addition to the plastic, you know, the normal 3D printers that uh, you've probably seen at least the products of recently. Um, additionally, we have the simulation center down there, and what that is is a giant space dedicated to um, emerging technologies in, in the medical profession, uh, especially surgery. There's a lot of surgical um, uh, devices down there, and a lot of them are like remote uh, surgical devices where uh, people are remotely doing and performing surgeries uh, on models, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, getting into the, the future of surgeries where you're not necessarily having to sit there with your patient and get your scalpels out and go to town, but uh, you can actually do a lot of uh, surgeries remotely with robotic arms. So those are pretty wild um, things to to uh, take a look at. And uh, we have a few librarian guests outside that I would hopefully like to get inside here, maybe. I know I saw the uh, one of the former directors of the library, Wayne Pay, out there, and we should try and get him inside so we can uh, talk to him about um, what what has changed with the library profession and with this library in particular uh, in the last, uh, even just the last seven years, the transformation that this library has undergone is pretty incredible. And um, Wayne was the library director from 1984 to 2007, so he, you know, saw that period of uh, transformation of this library. So, yeah, this is pretty, this is pretty great. So, um, that's kind of the, the long overview of what's happening today. So, um, our School of Medicine alumni are all uh, listening to lectures over in HSCB. Um, it was kind of a pick, pick and choose your own uh, schedule. So we'll hopefully get people as they're walking through so we can ask some questions about their experiences here at the University of Utah at the School of Medicine, the, their experience with the Eccles Health Sciences Library. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty exciting event. We're really excited to be able to show off some of these uh, emerging, emerging innovative technologies that we've had here at the Eccles Health Sciences Library. Um, the studio, of course, is one of them. The virtual reality uh, gaming and um, kind of the 
uh, the emergence of that. Um, of course, the anatomage table, which is just wild. You'll all enjoy that greatly. And then, of course, down in the uh, garden level at the library, just uh, creative spaces down there, the 3D printing, the uh, innovation lab, um, as well as the simulation center down there. So give me just a moment. I'm going to go outside and check on things and see if I can go snag someone to talk to for a little bit. Where'd Wayne go? going to try and get him inside so I could, you know, chat with him, but yeah. Do you want to go talk on camera for a little bit? You're talking to me right now on the audio, so yeah. I am still going. No? No, it's on a delay. We've been at five minutes, yeah. It, it takes a little bit for it to get from the camera, too, but I'm still talking right now on it, so yeah. The, the five people that are watching this right now are riveted. <laughs> Incredible. <clears throat> well, so I want to thank everyone for watching this. Uh, not sure if we're going to really get four hours of me yakking uh, <laughs> out of this, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, people excuse me, uh, some folks coming through that uh, we can chat with. I would like one of our librarians to come in here if they want to come join. One of, one of you need to come in. One of you should come in. Just anyone. And talk about the exciting things happening at the Echo Cell Sciences Library to all of our fans. <laughs> well, everyone's being camera shy, so I apologize. But um, I think in a few minutes we will go walk outside and uh, take a look at the technologies that we have. Uh, with the Twitter stream, so I, I unfortunately cannot see what's happening on the Twitter stream right now, so hopefully people are watching that one. I can see the YouTube one, and uh, we have the audience of four, so the four of you watching right now, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. <laughs> I don't know. That's what, that's what you do on YouTube, right, is like, share, and subscribe, so yeah. So um, I guess I could introduce myself. I'm Brian Holt. I am the uh, Digital Collections Program Manager here at the Eccles Health Sciences Library. Um, I've worked here for seven years. Uh, I started in 2010 as a student assistant when I first started undergrad here at the University of Utah. And uh, I graduated in 2014 and uh, started working at the library full time when I graduated. and. Here I am, still here, still living the, uh, the dream of the Echo Cell Sciences Library. So um, one of the, for me, one of the best parts about working here is the uh, collaboration that all of the staff and the faculty here um, work on because we don't have a huge uh, staff or faculty, a huge number of people here. Uh, we do a lot of, um, like ad hoc groups where we're coming together um, to kind of create the new projects and programs of the library uh, in a very collaborative manner. Uh, so this studio is as much um, a passion project of mine as much as it is everyone else who has had their input. Uh, we started with the idea for this lab uh, I think in 2015, so two years ago, and it's evolved since then. The initial, the initial idea of this uh, creative uh, audiovisual lab 
was uh, a mobile, exclusively a mobile workstation that could be taken anywhere on the Health Sciences campus, anywhere within the building here. And uh, from there, it kind of evolved to, well, what if we not only incorporated mobile audio capture, video recording, um, with a dedicated space. Uh, so this entire studio is a, um, I don't know, a 25 foot by 15 foot wide build, uh, room rather, that has a dedicated, you know, dedicated camera, dedicated computer, dedicated um, uh, lights that are back here for people to be able to have well lit um, videos pictures, audio, or well, you know, light's not important for audio, but um, in order to just be able to have as professional of a recording space as possible, because, you know, a lot of times the difference between creating video and audio projects that look really amateurish or just, you know, like you're sitting there with your iPhone recording, you know, who knows what, is simply just having good lighting, having good audio equipment. And Melissa <laughs> Rethlifson, you should come hey. in and sit down. Okay. Um, this is the interim director of the Echoes Health Sciences Library, That's Melissa right. Rethlifson, who has been interim since August of this since year. Since July 28th. July 28th of this year. Yes. So um, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the studio space. Thank you. You are being broadcast on YouTube. And I Twitter. know. I know. I was watching, watching. you on both. <laughs> And I noticed there was a bit of a time delay there between is. them, so yes. I had to end up muting one because <laughs> otherwise, yes, you know, have, it just was wacky. Uh, the, we're showcasing both the wired, uh, dedicated streaming mm -hmm. uh, with the microphones and the camera through mm -hmm. YouTube, and then on the iPad is the mobile version. I so. was surprised at actually how comparable the quality was, oh. other than there's a little bit of... Um, there's more color that comes through, I think, right. on the actual camera. But right. the sound quality was actually pretty comparable, which I was shocked about, right. and probably because it's live. Right. It's, so. it's, it's streaming through the computer to mm -hmm. who knows where and back. Yeah. Woohoo! Uh, it's so, exciting. have you looked at all of the technologies? I so far, have, or you just started the rounds? I've just started the rounds. I did look at the anatomage table. We nice. were dissecting a crocodile mummy nice. that was very exciting <laughs> there's actually people looking at right. it right now which is also exciting okay. and then i saw the thank a librarian station right. so hoping lots of people learn how to thank their librarians right. today because right. their appreciation yeah. for national medical librarians month right now right. so we need to right. to Hashtag showcase national. that <laughs> they really should have actually come up with a real hashtag that then we could promote. It's pretty but long. Think librarian right. works though. But it's okay because when does. I was trying to type it in, there were multiple like national, you know, blank, blank months. Uh huh. The hashtags that were extraordinarily long. Okay. So. Well, good. Good. So good. Good. Not, not alone in that, but um, do you want to tell us a little bit about kind of the vision of interactive technologies here at the library and what you kind of see what that's going on currently, but also what you envision maybe in the future? Sure, I'm not sure if I'm good as a <laughs> contemporaneous type speaker as you are, that's but okay. you know, uh, we'll give it a shot. So the University of Utah mm -hmm. has currently five schools and colleges in the health sciences, and of course us as a library, and we serve all five of those schools and colleges. And right now they're working on uh, trying to integrate those schools more closely together. Right. And where I think that we see our role here in the library is really being the space where people can come together from all of those schools and colleges. Right. And the, one of the things that we've always been good at and always been known for in this library is technology and education technology specifically. So us becoming the education technology center for these schools and colleges being right. a drawing point, I think is is really what we're trying to build for. And so this uh, video studio is certainly a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. The anatomage table that we have, of course our computer labs, we have 3D printers, we have virtual reality. We're really trying to explore all those types of technologies that can be used to improve education. Right. And then of course research and, and healthcare as well. Right. So. Um, on the, uh, so, on the other hand, you know, on one side we have the educational technology aspect, mm -hmm. but um, 
What about the research side of things? I know that's more well, that's more like your passion as a librarian. Do you want to tell us a little more about oh. um, the direction there that you... That the library is going yeah. in terms of research? Yeah. That's a really good question, Brian. And, uh, <laughs> you know, putting me on the spot to talk about that, uh, I, can, I can make some things up. Sure. But right now we're actually, with the new vice president for research, Andy Weirich, he has put out a call for every school mm -hmm. and college and library right. to come up with a just a short description of their research achievements, um, what they have done in research in the past, what mm -hmm. they're known for, and then the research vision. Okay. And so uh, in November, I'm going to be working with the faculty to really talk about what our research vision right. is right. for us as faculty. Right. So that's one component. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to hear what people think about that right. and what they, right. they really that think that we should do. Within the yep, within cool. the library. Nice. Um, but a lot of what we do in terms of research is externally facing, of right. course. Of course. So we have a new faculty librarian who will be starting November 1st, which is very exciting, who Welcome, will be focusing, Tisha. yes, <laughs> Tisha, um, she'll be focusing largely on some of the research efforts that we're doing, at right. least at first, right. and you know, she's very talented, so we're very happy to have her. Yep. Um, and some of those research efforts that we have been putting a lot into uh, are specifically around research reproducibility. Right. And this is an area where I think libraries can be really central mm -hmm. in helping improve the quality of research at our universities all over. Right. And so we're really starting here being one of the pioneers to do a lot of this work around reproducibility, mm -hmm. both in terms of building awareness and then hopefully um, actually getting into more specific skills that right. people can use. Right. So training people in things like R, um, Python, GitHub, mm -hmm. um, using the open science framework, um, using electronic lab notebooks, all those different kinds of tools that right. can actually help science be more reproducible, but really also the theory behind it. And so we've started a series of research reproducibility grand rounds, or right. grand rounds research reproducibility, or GER, <laughs> um, which are weekly on Tuesdays from right. noon to one. Those have been amazing, yeah. and uh, people have come up from all over campus to mm -hmm. give these talks. So it's not just health sciences focused, right. but right. it's also research reproduci reproducibility applies to yes all science, all research being done across exactly academia, exactly sciences. yeah not just health sciences. Right. So we've had people from computer sciences, we've had um, people from um, actually from journalism. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had people from neurology, uh, all sorts of different areas. Right, so it's been right. really exciting. So come to those yes. Tuesdays, if you're on, 12 to 1, if you're here. If and you're we're on campus or in the vicinity. Yes. And we'll also be filming them and we'll have them on our e channel YouTube station. Yes. So if you do a search for Grand Rounds Research Reproducibility, you will see two of the talks one by Ed Dudek okay. and one by Julie Keeper that are up. How many more uh, Grand Rounds do we have? They're um, going to be going all the way through. April. April. Oh, okay. Yes. So both fall and spring semester. Yes, Perfect. both fall and spring. And so we're still soliciting a few more speakers mm -hmm. for slots in spring, but we actually have all the way through um, early December awesome. is all booked out. Awesome. And so people can find that schedule. Again, if you just do a search for Utah GER, you'll find it. So, awesome. yes. And uh, next summer, uh, Research Reproducibility yes. Conference? Correct. That's in Correct. The works. Yes. So we had done a research reproducibility conference in 2016 mm -hmm. that went really well. We had yes. speakers from all over, like really internationally known speakers like right. John Ioannidis and um, David Mower and Hilda Bastian and um, people from the federal government. We mm -hmm. had the, the chief of the Office of Research Integrity came and she was a panelist. So right. there were, we had, it was a great conference and we really wanted to repeat it. Right. But we didn't really have any funding so we actually applied for a grant and we got right. funding for it. Excellent. From the Office of Research Integrity, so thank, thank you, you to them. Office of we Research really Integrity. appreciate that a yeah. lot. Um, and we will be hosting the second iteration of that conference on June 15th, 2018. Excellent. 
Yes, so that would be great. And then yes. leading up to the conference, um, in addition to our Grand Rounds talks, we will also be having a, a four-day course, so from June 11th to 14th, right. that's going to be credit-bearing and also CME-bearing, so um, people can come who want the, the actual course credits or who right. just want um, continuing education credits, mm -hmm. and that we're partnering with the Department of Philosophy on. Oh, interesting. Yes, uh, because we have a huge philosophy of science department here right. and specialty, right. and this is a topic that they're really interested in, so we've right. been really happy to partner with them on that, so Excellent. we're putting that together. Um, and the goal of it will really be to delve into a lot of the issues around reproducibility mm -hmm. and then um, prepare all of the students in that course to attend the conference and be able to um, address the issues and right. ask questions of the speakers more right. um, more articulately, right. more thoughtfully, <laughs> more not more like fingers just, on chin yes, <laughs> all of that stuff, you know, so we, we want to, to have a really engaged audience. Um, so we're Excellent. looking forward yeah. to that as well. Exciting. So that's, yeah, it's, I think it's very exciting. And mm -hmm. we've also started a campus-wide research reproducibility coalition nice. with people who are really interested in the topic to right. try and move things forward. Because right. one of the big issues is that people are both neither aware of this issue, right. um, or they think it doesn't apply to them, right. or what's worse is that the incentives are so skewed against reproducibility right. that it doesn't make sense career-wise for people to actually do reproducible right. science. The, the focus being uh, new novel discoveries and not proving that findings that are being published and you know, disseminated in academia are actually reproducible. Yes. AKA true. Yes. True yes. than not. Yes. Nice. Yes, exactly. Right. And so, yes, if you want to follow more on this topic, we also have the hashtag Make Research True, mm -hmm. which um, is based on uh, John Ioannidi's article, How to Make More Research True. Right. Um, and he offered a lot of really good suggestions in that article, but there's more and more research being done around this topic right. that we'll be sharing out right. uh, information that's published right. using that hashtag, too. And then um, the conference hashtag will be Utah RR. 18. Right. So all and of those are be, available yes. now. Yes, if you're following on our Twitter, you're yes. probably seeing our yes. uh, our content on the matter. And if you're on YouTube right now, mm -hmm. uh, same thing. Uh, yes, I hope Twitter so. So and, do follow us. We're yes. at EHS Library. Right. And if you and search you. Utah Research Reproducibility Grand Rounds, you'll yep. be able to find that content as yep. well as uh, Utah Research Reproducibility. You'll probably probably find the conference proceedings yes. for 2016. Yes. If you're interested in watching the lectures yes. um, and looking at the content from that one. They were pretty incredible. Yes. I have to recommend it. And this morning I actually just watched Ed Dudek's talk on reproducibility and epilepsy research. And it was amazing. Right. Uh, so I can really highly recommend watching that and then Julie Keeper's talk as well. Right. So yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, do you have anything else they want to share before we um, explore the uh, technologies. So we have these rad new buttons. Yes, we do. <laughs> There's this cool new logo graphic. Yes. I was thinking thing. we could get like an applique that could go in the background of the wall that could Ooh. look pretty. That would be pretty, pretty slick, sweet. But, you know. But they show the tree of Hippocrates right. and then the synapses. So they're blending yes. the old right. and the new <laughs> together. Sweet. Um, and I think that these are really fun, so yes. you should all come and pick one up. Yes, if and you're on, on campus, please yes. please come by. We are here until 3 p.m. They're awesome. Yes. And then you can also thank a librarian. You can mm -hmm. test out some of this cool stuff. Mm -hmm. You can try out VR. You can try out, or look at 3D printing, try right. out the anatomage table. It's all good. We've got a lot of interactive technologies here yes. that are available, not just today, but from the future, yes. um, we will be posting on our internet channels, uh, lib guides, uh, research yes. guides, uh, kind of showcasing what technologies we have and the process of either like reserving the space, 
the anatomage table, uh, the VR equipment, etc. So yes, it's really exciting. It is. It's yes. very, very exciting. And the team here has just done an amazing job of putting all of this together. So you'd be missing out if you didn't stop by <laughs> if you're on campus. Yes. So thank so, you, Brian. Yeah, well, thank you yes. for joining me. Appreciate and now it. you can go back to just, you know, talking the up the top of your head. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, extemporaneous speaking is I've, always a good thing. I've, I've had some practice at yakking, so. <sighs> yeah. But I think I will go take the uh, Twitter stream okay. through the building and yeah. go show off. Yeah, our, do, because more people are starting to arrive. Yes. So Awesome. Yeah, we can get some extra Excellent. patrons. Well, thank, you for, thank you for chatting. Yes, you're yeah, welcome. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Alrighty. So, um, all of you on the YouTube channel, that was Melissa Rethlison, the uh, interim director here at the Eggles Health Sciences Library, and uh, want to appreciate her uh, uh, chatting with us today. And uh, yes, thank you, thank you, Maureen. Now, thank you. I try. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, uh, thanks, Shirley, too. So um, I think here in a few minutes, unless we get um, any visitors of our alumni coming in, I will go take the uh, Twitter stream through the building to show off the uh, virtual reality, the Venga Librarian Station, uh, the Anatomage table especially, um, and then go, go on a deep, uh, deep run down to the garden level of the basement uh, no. of the library. Yeah. Hi. Just want to... Do you want to chat? No. Are you sure? No, thank you. <sighs> You're, you would be a great, great interview, I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, we'll go down to the garden level and uh, take a look at the uh, innovation uh, design lab, um, the 3D printing, of course, as well as the uh, simulation center that uh, should be open for business today. So thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to pause the Twitter live, or excuse me, not the Twitter live stream, the YouTube live stream for a moment, and uh, we will go mobile with the uh, Twitter live stream uh, shortly. So, if you're watching on YouTube right now, go to twitter.com forward slash ehs library, all one word, ehs library. Uh, you'll be able to watch the Twitter stream on Periscope as we go through the building. So my apologies that all of it isn't self-contained into one stream, but uh, we wanted to showcase the uh, abilities of having a dedicated live stream space as well as the mobile space. So um, we'll be back on YouTube uh, shortly, uh, but if you're watching on YouTube right now, do go jump over to the Twitter stream right now, twitter.com forward slash EHS library, and uh, we will come back here soon.